Here's something you might not have known about Tim Waltz. He's on a group text with dozens of current and former members of Congress, men and women called sports buddies, where they mostly trash talk each other's favorite teams. Those relationships, though, proved valuable. Walls had a lot of cheerleaders in Congress during the VP vetting process. One central argument is that his Hill connections could help Harris implement her legislative agenda. He's especially liked by a number of key progressive lawmakers. Progressive caucus chair Pramila Jayapal said the current moment for Democrats is, quote, organizer gold. NBC's Julie Serkin is reporting from Capitol Hill. Also with us, former Democratic Congressman of New York, Joe Crowley, former chair of the House Democratic Caucus. Good to have both of you. So what are you hearing from progressives on the Hill, Julie? Well, progressives have worked with Tim Walls for a long time in Congress. He was a member of this body for 12 years, Chris, and he obviously represented a very swingy district uh, in Minnesota. So he was able to work across the aisle, but he was also able to build deep relationships with progressives. And many of them are applauding this pick by Vice President Harris. You mentioned Jaya Paul. She also posted a cheeky photo of Walls holding, holding a little piglet saying the only reaction you can have to Trump's deranged, rambling, unhinged rhetoric sometimes. Uh, you also heard from Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez, a member of the so-called squad here, uh, actually poking fun at the fact that they, not only did she endorse and back this pick, but also uh, did Senator Joe Manchin, somebody who really never agrees with AOC. She's saying that they are in disconcerting levels of array, meaning agreement uh, throughout the party on this. And it might have something to do with the fact that Walls, while he was a member of Congress, was very moderate. If you look at his voting record bills that he he supported. He really is in the center left of his party. But as governor enacting and backing many progressive policies and platforms, something that Sanders, Bernie Sanders, championed and talked about on Minnesota Public Radio on Saturday, talking about the free breakfast and lunches in schools, talking about his record on codifying abortion rights, on health care protections, uh, in Sanders' words, really standing up for the working people and the working class. Bernie Sanders, by the way, Chris, has not formally endorsed Harry for president. Uh, he told me before the Senate left for recess uh, that he's going to do everything he can to elect her. Certainly a pick like Walls is going to make him happy, and it is interesting that it is unifying the party in this way. Also, by the way, reaching out to the Muslim and Arab American community where Michigan, sitting next door, had that big uncommitted vote. This is something that Democratic leaders are also hoping that Walls can help with. As you know, Joe, um, not everybody was for Tim Walls. Everybody had their own ideas, but you served with him. Uh, what was your impression of him? What do you think of Tim Walls as the pick, as somebody who worked with him? And, and is it possible that he could be somebody, if the ticket was elected, that could help on the Hill? Well, I do think that uh, Vice President Harris had a great uh, selection of people to pick from. Uh, and I knew uh, three of them very well, uh, Josh Shapiro, who I've known for almost 30 years, uh, and certainly Mark Kelly, we all have known, and Gabby Giffords. Um, and Tim Walls is someone that I, I served with for 12 years. He is a wonderful human being. Uh, people describe him as a happy warrior. I think that's right. Uh, I think that uh, Tim uh, is very smart. Uh, very dedicated to his constituency when he was in the House. I worked very closely with him on the Affordable Care Act. You know, he had the Mayo Clinic in his backyard in his district, uh, but wanted that for more Americans to have exposure to some top-quality health care. And he voted and supported the Affordable Care Act back then. Uh, he's just a wonderful, wonderful man, and I'm, I, I think it's a great pick. He, uh, a good friend of mine described him as a kitchen table kind of guy, and I think that's really right. As you know, the attacks have begun on the other side. Nikki Haley, for example, who uh, did endorse Donald Trump, posted this. Democrats doubling down on the progressive movement, a win for open borders, socialism and Iran. Do you think that this could help the Trump campaign? Does it give them talking points? Well, I wonder how Nikki Haley is working with that, that whiplash she has all of a sudden. You know, uh, it, it's really ironic to hear Nikki Haley criti criticizing anyone at this point uh, when she bashed Donald Trump throughout her primary and now has suckled up to him again. Um, I, I do look, 
no one's perfect. Uh, there's going to be issues out there that Tim will deal with, uh, but he'll do it honestly. Uh, he, he's someone who, who will readily admit that he's made mistakes, running up against a guy like Donald Trump, who never admits he makes a mistake. Uh, so there'll be a real dichotomy here. Uh, the fact that you mentioned earlier AOC and Joe Manchin uh, are behind uh, this pick, I think, speaks volumes to Tim's ability to, to really relate to other people. And I do think, uh, Chris, you're right. He's going to have that ability, ability to work the House to work the Senate uh, as vice president and to help get their agenda across the table. So we're seeing right now uh, Vice President Harris, who has gotten off Marine Two. She's at uh, Joint Base Andrews uh, JBA, and she is going to make her way uh, to meet up with Tim Walz, somebody we hear she had great chemistry with, and they're going to have their first uh, in a series of uh, rallies in seven battleground states over the course of the next uh, five days. Pennsylvania, of course, getting a tremendous amount of attention. It's a place um, that, frankly, campaigns can be decided. Uh, the, the campaign likes to say that just in the last 15 days, they've had over 33,000 people signed up to volunteer. They've got almost 300 staffers working in 36 offices. Let's, did, did we hear if she said something there? Ah, why Tim Wall? She gave the thumbs up and walked away. And there you see her with the second gentleman, uh, Doug Emhoff, who has also been very productive uh, even before Joe Biden stepped down on the campaign trail uh, and almost certainly will continue to be a big part of this campaign. Uh, can we just talk about relationships, Joe? And I know you've watched a lot of presidential campaigns, and I've mentioned this a number of times on the show, but when Joe Biden first decided to step down, and Kamala Harris went to what was now her campaign headquarters in Delaware. Uh, Doug Emhoff told a story about when she was chosen to be VP and going over to the home of uh, the Bidens and how welcoming they were. There were cookies and how Joe Biden called his parents. And I don't know if you can like put that aside when we hear that a relationship, chemistry, was important to them to whoever she decided to to pick. And what does it mean out on the campaign trail to be with people who you trust, who you like, who, frankly, you can stand to be with 24-7 sometimes, including well, on a small campaign plane? <laughs> well, I think that's important. Chemistry is always important. I think that certainly something that uh, the vice president had in mind when she met with all these folks. And as I said before, I, th I think she could have had chemistry with any of them, quite frankly. But there's no doubt that uh, Tim, uh, Tim Waltz is one of the nicest people you will ever meet. He's a decent honorable, good person. And that comes across in just his personality, the way he acts, the way he speaks. He, he can cut right through to things and uh, it, it can be very effective, can be very biting at times as well. But that's a chemistry that she, she was looking for, someone that can be that wing person for her, uh, can be there when she maybe couldn't say something, Tim can say something she can't say, and vice versa. So, you know, he speaks to middle America, speaks to Minnesota, speaks to Michigan, speaks to Pennsylvania speaks to Wisconsinites. I think that's the, that's why I, I think she, she chose Tim, because he's not just about Minnesota. He's about the Midwest. It's just an accent. You can hear it in him.